walking around brainwashing everybody. Might have heard that somewhere else a few times, but now it's just out in the open because they're going operational. Remember the Pentagon a year and a half ago goes, because of the Drudge Report and other alternative media, we're going to stop lying. We apologize for stop lying. I'm the Undersecretary of Defense, the Deputy Secretary of Defense, and I'm here to tell you everything's fine. We're going to work with you in every community in town, every newspaper, every website. The U.S. Army's here to help with the rest of the joint services. And it showed the military, the generals, the plain clothes people just shaking their heads. Some had tears in their eyes. They had their heads in their hands because they knew what this meant. Full rollout. We're here to help and stop lying. We're here to be domestically with you. We're here to teach you how bad mommy and daddy are and how the carbon taxes are good. And now they just admit it all because, see, they've got to just roll it out and go, well, of course we arrest people that disagree with the government. That's MSNBC. They go, thank goodness. Thank God. Rachel Maddow and others, I've seen them say it. I'll play the clips. Of course we're arresting Tea Party. Of course we're taking your tax exemptions. Of course we're going to put you in jail. You're criminal racist. It's like, of course we're arresting all the Jews and putting them in concentration camps. Of course we're arresting the anti-communist in Russia and putting them in forced labor gulags. Of course Alexander Solzhenitsyn has been locked up. <laughs> we're tyrants. We've taken... <laughs> I mean, just flaming totalitarian scum parading up and down in front of everyone. And everybody's supposed to just cower and go, okay, I... I was uh, out barbecuing and a couple of liberals were out there last night. <sighs> some folks that some of the family knows. And so they came over and they're like, you know, I think this political correctness is getting a little out of hand. <clears throat> I, was, I just didn't even say anything. Because they didn't really know who I am. I'm just like, yeah, it's not supposed, it, it's supposed to be like that lady. Yeah, like comedians can't make jokes. And now they're saying just being heterosexual is bad. And I don't know what's going on. I mean, it's gotten extreme and we've got to accept Sharia law. And I don't know what's going on. And I, you don't know what's going on. You're being conquered. You had your culture taken away. You were trained to roll over. It's like putting a fat pappy on dog, a little sweet dog out in the middle of uh, Yellowstone Park in the middle of the night near the wolf packs. They're going to come out and eat it. You're a little cute little puppy, a little jingly. Oh, hi. Hi, Mr. Wolf. I want to be your friend. Oh, you be my friend? Hi. hi. You're like, but I'm cute. I'm sweet. Uh, 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 I complied with everything you said. I rolled over. I showed you my pink belly. And so you'll have everything taken from you. Because you wanted to feel like you were on a winning team. You were part of the Democrats. You were part of the Republicans. You were part of the establishment. You, you, you would watch the news and, in a studious way, regurgitate exactly what you heard to try to sound smart. And, you know, you'd sit there and talk about football with your friends and feel real smart about that. While the whole world was being stolen from you. While cancer viruses were being put in the medicine chain, in your vaccines... While you were being poisoned, the water being poisoned, your food being poisoned, while the diseases exploded, while you were being murdered, while it was all happening, it was all funny to them. Because they live, you sleep. Only admitting the full horror will stop them. All tech put out by globalists is designed for something totally different than what they tell you it's for. I'll tell you right now, Audi and Volkswagen are the ones coming out with cars that watch you, cars that can tell if you're nervous and call the police, cars that can tell you're too sleepy. So are the Japanese. I've told people, because I was told by a source that OnStar was listening to everything you do. Five years later, it was all admitted. You've got to reject all this and say, I'm not buying an Audi or a Ford, or a Chevy that has any of this in it. I don't want the smart, intelligent car. Because it's not straight technology we're being given to enhance our lives and our safety. It's being given to us so that when the globalists take over, no one can stand against them because everything, our way of life, is destroyed. There's no self-sufficiency, and all tech is there as a prison to control us. This is the admitted technocrat new world order takeover program in their own words they call themselves technocrat which means a technological dictator system
Coming up, Israel will allow police to fire live ammunition at protesters. And I just love this Orwellian article out of the Los Angeles Times. I'm going to cover it when we come back. <laughs> because whether you're for Israel or against Israel, whatever, it is the most Orwellian. You want to know how they sell it. They say, basically, if you're a demonstrator, they're going to shoot you with lead ammunition. But don't worry, it's small caliber. <laughs> two, two, three. <laughs> they're acting like it's not lethal. <laughs> Two, two, three is one of the most deadly rounds there is. It disintegrates when it hits you and opens up because they wanted to kill more people and maim more people in Vietnam. And so they could, they had to have full metal jacket under the Geneva Convention. So they made a full metal jacket, hyper velocity round that breaks up when it hits bone. It's basically a fragmentation kinetic weapon. Any bullet's a kinetic weapon, but it's a fragmentation kinetic weapon. That gets around the Geneva Convention. <laughs> so they're gonna, we're going to shoot you with 223 from a Ruger range rifle, and it's okay. Oh, oh my God. See, I said I'd cover it after the break. I just had to cover it right then. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm crying. That's so hilarious. Oh my gosh. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. We're going to shoot you with an M16 round, but don't worry. It's small caliber. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to stop right there. Mm, I'm going to stop right there. Oh, man. I didn't used to like M4s. So they've really perfected them in the last decade. I remember the old days being a kid, you know, shooting semi-auto M16s, AR-15s. I didn't like them. They'd have problems and stuff. But, man, the ones they've got now are just amazing. Ooh. I, I actually started tearing up with just hilari hilarity there for a moment. Um. Bring in to Joe Biden getting geared up to run. We come back. Uh, Europe seizing homes to house Muslim migrants. Uh, Soros demands Europe accept millions of Muslims annually. How about you accept them to your Connecticut house? Piece of filth. Uh, it's, it's all coming up. Stay with us. Infowars.com. Spread the word, please. Headline of the LA Times. Israel will allow police to fire live ammunition at protesters. Israel's security cabinet has approved measures that allow police to open fire with live ammunition at Palestinian protesters, throwing stones when officers believe their lives are in danger. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told the cabinet. Now, now regardless of what you think about this, people throwing Molotov cocktails at you, I mean, I can see shooting at them. It's just saying, they say later, but don't worry, it's a very low caliber, 223. They used to have wildcat rounds that were like 15 caliber that were even more deadly. They're like 5,000 feet per second. These are like almost 3,000 feet per second. And then it just goes on to say that um, it's okay because it's a smaller round. Simply ridiculous. Smaller caliber rounds from Ruger rifles at people hurling stones. So that just shows how stories can be absolutely spun to the thousandth degree. I want to get into Joe Biden, the election, Trump's uh, tax cuts that he's talking about and more. But before I do that, we're going to end a special on October 1st. And still, we're going to have InfoWars Select. That's the full spectrum package at the same time, exact same quality as My Patriot Supply. We sell My Patriot Supply at InfoWarsStore.com. Parallel, right beside InfoWars Select. But I'm able, time to time, contractually, if I private label their food, to offer even better deals on already the best deals in the industry. So normally it's the best price, the freshest food, the highest quality, what I personally have decided to have as a sponsor, who I personally buy from, who I personally use, my Patriot Supply, the InfoWarsStore.com. But under the InfoWars Select banner, you can get an introductory price that's the lowest the company's ever offered. And we'll have some other specials and things once this special's over, but it'll be on this pack or that pack every week. It won't be on everything. This is the best deal that they've ever offered anybody. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And you notice I got up on air last night, I got up on air last week, and I said, I don't think the blood moons are going to cause anything. I don't think it's connected to anything. The elite are obsessed with it. They might do something, but the real crisis is financial meltdown, war with Russia, ISIS out of control, 
flesh-eating bacteria, CERN Collider. I mean, there's a lot of crazy technologies and things that could get out of hand. So I'm not saying the world isn't in major turmoil. The Pentagon admits one of the most dangerous times in human history. I'm saying blaming it on the blood moon. I mean, we go through these cycles. It's how the moon goes around the earth. The uh, Jewish uh, calendar is set to it because they marked it down back then. It's like, oh my God, all the Jewish holidays are following on the blood moons. Well, th this means it's the end of the world. No, the Jews set it up on the moon. The Sabbath was based on the moon. That's why that was going on. So folks are like, oh, the Shemitah is over. The blood moon didn't kill everybody. I don't need storable food. This stuff lasts over 20 years. It's what I personally have. I think you're crazy if you don't go to InfoWarsStore.com and purchase it, and then the small profit we make funds this very expensive operation. It costs a lot of money every year. 50-plus employees, servers, cameras, flying people around, lawyers, licensing, media. We, we, we fund a news organization for cheaper than anybody else has pretty much ever done it of this size. But still, I spend a lot of my time trying to find the nuts, you know, to find the stuff to fund this operation. So I want to thank you all for shopping at InfoWarsStore.com. You are truly fighting the tip of the spear in the defense of the Second Amendment, our sovereignty, and the fight against the globalism. So check out the great storable foods at InfoWarsStore.com or 888-253-3139. Even if you're not into religion, you should care what the leader of one billion people has to say. We're talking about Pope Francis, who ended his tour yesterday promoting world government carbon taxes and the rest of it. In Philadelphia, Jakari Jackson was there, and I wanted to play uh, the Pope, what he had to say about Christ's human failure on the cross, his greatest triumph. There it is. And if at times our efforts and works seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. The entire Christian faith is based on the great victory. Uh, all three Gospels say he laid it down willingly, it was a sacrifice and that it was Christ's greatest triumph, and he says it's a failure. And then twist it, but oh, see, it became great later. And then nothing, we have the full transcript, that's the, all the clip we can find. Uh, the full transcript Jakari Jackson read over, where he, he didn't come out and say, and then he rose again. I mean, this, this, is, this is over the top. And, when, and again, maybe he's a wonderful guy, a great little socialist. It's just this isn't biblical. Let's go to the Shikari Jackson report. Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com reporting in Philadelphia. This is the last day of the Pope's visit. Now, since he's been here, he's said and done a lot of things. But the thing that stuck out to me the most is something he said during, I guess it was a mass, where he came out and said that the life of Jesus ultimately ended in failure, in the failure on the cross. I have the transcript here. This is reported by ABC News, and it says in part, the cross shows us a different way of measuring success. Ours is to plant the seed. God sees the fruit of our labors. And if at times our efforts and work seem to fail and not produce fruit, we need to remember that we are followers of Jesus Christ and his life, humanly speaking, ended in failure, the failure of the cross. Then he went on to talk about the dangers of being uh, comfortable with uh, surroundings and things such as that, which is a whole nother topic in and of itself. But he says the failure of Jesus, the failure of the cross, even though the Bible clearly states that Jesus knew what was going to happen to him as uh, far as the cross was concerned, how he is going to lay his life down. He even said, Lord, if it is your will, take this bitter cup from me, but not your will, but not my will, your will be done. And particularly we know this when we look at John 17 and 18. Therefore doth my father love me because I laid my life down that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself. Which is to say, nobody took his life from him on the cross. He laid it down willingly. He knew what was going to happen to him. So to say that his life in general, the cross in particular, was a failure is something I'm very disappointed to see from a supposed spiritual leader. And there are many other things I could 